All right, good morning. Artificial intelligence gets underway. I'm actually uh, back in Denver and I'm a virtual reality person here, which is coming to this room later when James Cleverly will sort of be broadcasting himself out of Perth. Couldn't make it, but we're going to WebEx him in and hopefully it'll be effective. But everybody else, all our speakers and certainly all our delegates look alive and well, which is good after a, what I thought was a pretty great conference. Um, lots of good discussions. Good to see geologists and geophysicists intermingling, having conversations. So the quest here was, can we get a snapshot of what's going on in a very, what I think is a very, very significant field? And I can't really call it a technology because anything that even remotely resembles putting together information like people think is, is, is to me more sociological than actually technical. Um, the technical part often is, I think, pretty easy because it's, uh, you know, you can get it on Google or Wikipedia, all the factual information, but how you assemble it and how you make deductions. And certainly in our industry, we know we're poised for the great crew change. Probably if you had a, um, in terms of years' experience, probably in the next 10 years, I would say easily 70% of the collective experience of the industry will be offline, retired. And that's simply because guys like me, I've been in the business almost 50 years. So that is the younger people coming in don't have a Google or a Wikipedia quite for that knowledge. And so one of the things I think that I've seen AI people are um, implying it may help us to bridge the gap as a lot of that experience leaves. Can we, can we somehow replicate it? Can we uh, help steer people to continue to find increasingly difficult resources with the aid of machine learning? And of course, big data, we're always, we certainly generate a huge amount of big data but it's often we're challenged as to what to do with that. Um, many companies make the good fight to get the information, but then stumble when it comes to actually using that data. Now I'm excluding, of course, the, the state surveys and state and federal surveys, because that's their mandate. They do a certain amount of pointing out what I think is a value in those data sets, but it's really up generally the private sector to, to embrace that information and try and get useful outcomes, ways forward. So another topic for, that we have, and one of the, in the, in the quest that, um, and I apologize too, he's not even here virtually, but my, my original co-chair who organized a lot of that and dealt with the, you, the speakers, John Hart, wasn't able to be here from Rio Tinto. So he's, he's uh, doing an induction with a new employee in Perth, which is a pretty exciting and important thing as well, but you know, he, he was planning to attend, but he just wasn't able to. So as Bjorn Chris Johnson, sitting in the front, also one of our speakers has kindly uh, agreed to help out on the co-chair side. So I have a similar workshop that's going to be given at the back end of the PDAC. And I have a young geoscientist gentleman by the name of Matthew Landre, who just had his second his wife had a second child, and, but he's still going to attend the workshop, he told me, in Toronto. But Matthew is, to me, of the generation that really AI would, would come to blossom for because he's an incredibly intelligent and motivated young geoscientist. He trained originally as a geophysicist. Glencore, his employer at Raglan, has now given all the generative responsibilities. He's something like 34 years old, and he... he, uh, he looks to AI as something that will help him in his job as he goes forward in the profession. He's got a, uh, an incredible passion for the subject that I realize that that is really what we need when we have technologies in front of us. They just don't sit there and spring to life um, automatically. You have to have people who spend the time. So if some of you in this room like me anyways, but I'm kind of more further down the path, see things that in that cloud that uh, trigger something in you and you can see an application in your work. 
Or you can see, I think even more importantly, as, as we all get, not pounded, but exposed to the issues of social license, if you can see where this technology could help an indigenous people, could help students, it's up to you to bring that to your attention because you're the fortunate few that get to see this at, at the front. World-class experts will be talking to us today. These are really unique people. Not all the applications, or probably the majority, aren't going to be in our space to begin with. So it's up to us, to you, to do what we're always told about, which is innovate. How do you bring ideas over from other fields and apply them to the problems you have in your workspace? But there's all sorts of other people out there who don't have that advantage that you have. So I'm, of course, Ken Witherly, um, co-chair. And this will be the AI day. Um, yeah. As you all saw, we had to rejig the room. We have a group that uh, I represent when I'm putting my commercial hat down, which is DMEC, and it was established about 10 years ago with the sole vision of basically getting the better use of technology and in integration in geosciences. We're not beholden to anybody. We don't have any membership. Uh, we don't hold conference. Well, we do hold conferences, but we don't uh, basically have any overheads. So we're we're sort of a bunch of philosopher geoscientists that are trying to do good things for the world. And uh, my involvement with this is certainly uh, qualifies for that. We have an extensive amount of resources on our our website. We're now being, uh, in, we're going to become increasingly involved with the Frank Arnott contest, which some of you may have heard about. Uh, but we, uh, we sponsored the Exploration 17 meeting uh, that was held in Toronto in October. We had over 1,200 delegates there. These are 10-year snapshots of, of where technology is going, geophysics, re uh, geochemistry, remote sensing, information technology. We had a lot of geophys or geologists there, which was good. Next one will be in 2027. We're key linked into Frank Arnott. How many of you heard of the Frank Arnott? Just curious, say straw poll. About half. That's not bad. That's good. It was a collaborative contest that uh, Dave Pratt in the room and I and a couple of other colleagues set up to honor a, a colleague of ours who passed away in 09. The finals were presented at the, um, uh, at the expiration 17. Uh, student group from the University of Adelaide won the student contest. A number of them were here at the convention and um, we're looking at trying to get an ongoing program somewhat modeled after the Oil Industries Imperial Barrel Award. Uh, so we're working on that currently. So very exciting. Some of our resources, just go to the website, have a look. It's all free to download and uh, including recordings of a number of workshops. I think it's important to capture more than just PowerPoints where we can, and I know the ASIG is also doing that. Kim and his team are working on uh, Dave Annett's getting a lot of the meetings and special workshop events captured so that they're available for people who can attend, which I think is excellent. So our agenda for today, I've done my basic intro. We have um, emergency exits behind us, down the stairs, across the street to the park. That's our rally point. So there'll be uh, an initial warning tone, which means stand by. And then when the loud whoop whoop happens, that's basically our, and there'll be voices as well, they tell me, in the walls to do the evacuation. The toilets are just down the hall about 80 meters and on the uh, there's a unisex one just on the right and I assume there's some other further down. We have a tea break at 10.15 to 10.45. We have a lunch break which I assume would be served out in the foyer. We didn't get any special requests from anybody so it's just normal light food and then another tea break in the afternoon. So you've all got your handouts I trust. Uh, we're gonna try and other than uh, James not being uh, possible to be here with us physically, uh, we're going to WebEx him in. We've done this sort of thing before, but we're going to do it right after morning tea so we have the 
10 or 15 minutes to set it up. So we'll move on to our first speaker, Steve Fraser, who's diagonally in the back. We know where you are, Steve. <laughs> 